decided that I'd kind of like to share with you how to simplify a complex rational expression using both methods. Um, so this much simpler problem I'm going to tackle, we've done one in a previous video clip, uh, part one to this segment, this is part two. Um, I'm going to share with you first of all the same method we did before. So that was to add these two fractions, one over t plus six over one. So I'm going to add those two fractions first, and then down here I'm going to subtract 1 over t minus 5 over 1, if you need to see that 1 down there. So here, i got to get a common denominator, so i got to multiply top and bottom by, by t. Um, it's pretty easy because this is such a small problem, I can show you, you this. Um, so this 1 plus the 6t is going to be my numerator. I'm going to write it as 6t plus a 1 because we tend to, you know, put that in descending order. They have a common denominator of t. I'm done with the numerator. Down here, they needed to have a common denominator of t also. So this fraction needs to be multiplied by the missing part, which is that t, um, top and bottom. And so this 1 minus 5t, which is over the common denominator of t, I'm going to write it just as a minus 5t plus 1. I could have written that as 1 minus 5t. And remember that when you divide fractions, when you take this fraction and divide by this fraction, you don't rewrite this one, you don't flip it or anything, it's this one that's flipped, the second one. Um, I think I'll do it right down here. So the 6t plus the 1 over t remains. We often say skip that one, then we say flip this one, and then we say multiply. Skip, flip, and multiply. And then I'm going to remove the common factor of t that is on the top and on the bottom. And these binomials, 6t plus 1, they can't be factored. And a minus 5t plus 1 can't be factored. So my final answer is the 6t plus the 1 over that minus 5t plus the 1. Again, two binomials. Don't touch them. You can't reduce those 1s. You can't reduce those t's. It has to be factors, not terms, that you, re you reduce. So that's the answer to this problem. Let's um, go ahead and do this problem um, a different way. And so, um, would you kind of just mark that answer down and remember it? Let's see if I can erase this. All right. There we go. So same problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this complex rational expression by the number 1. The number 1. And what I'm going to use is the least common denominator for all the fractions that are in the problem. The reason this is so nice for this problem is that the LCD is T. It's just the letter T. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by the number 1. I'm exaggerating. In, in terms of I'm doing it very large, I'm going to write uh, multiply by the number 1 in the form of t over t. This means, however, that this t has got to be multiplied by that term and by that term. And this t has to be multiplied by that term and by that term. So let's write that down um, individually for each one. So over here, I have the 1 over the t, and it has to be multiplied by t. And I have the 6 and it has to be multiplied by the t. Let's go ahead and write the downstairs portion too. So this 1 over t gets multiplied by t. And this 5 gets multiplied by this t. So, And what happens when you multiply by the least common denominator is that many of the denominators, or those that contain fractions, the denominators will be re reduced, excuse me. So this t over that t will cancel out. And so what you'll have there is a first term is the 1, and then you'll have the 6t. And over here, this t and that t will cancel out. And what you'll have left is this 1 minus the 5t. And that's the answer that we got just a minute ago in this problem when we just decided to add the two fractions by getting common denominators and then skip, flip, and multiply. So if you easily see the LCD of all the fractions that are involved, you have to multiply every term by all of the LCD, and then you get to remove the fractions. So it's a pretty cool method. 
Uh, if, and it's easy to remember this part, but if the common denominator is extremely large, it can be a little bit of a hassle and, and troublesome to keep track of. That's it for complex rational expressions. Uh, the topic is uh, rational expressions and equations, and, and we'll get to that, um, are uh, quite an involved process. A lot of factoring, a lot of remembering your, your arithmetic for work with fractions.